Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hurting People Do Cry Podcast. My name is Willa Power. I am your host today. I do have with me today Damien. What's up, Damien? Hello, hello. Okay, we heard that one. (laughs) (laughs) I also have with me uh, Pastor Daisy Blair. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Blair. Uh, She is a woman of God, and what she wants you to know is that she loves teaching. She said that is her heart is teaching. No matter what it is, she's going to teach it to you. And that's what we need. But she is here to give us her story, her testimony, what she's been through. And I do pray that her testimony can reach and uh, heal somebody else as well. And as you know, as I always get started, I always have my host, Damien, to start us out with a prayer. So, Damien, do you mind just starting us out with a prayer, please? Not a problem, not a problem. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for all you provided. We ask that you touch the mouth of the speakers, Heavenly Father. We ask that you touch the ears of the ear, Heavenly Amen. Father. Allow transformation to take place in their heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm talking like I'm country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pastor uh, Daisy Blair has been in the ministry for 2000, since 2009. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yes. All right. And she is a woman of God. And what we finna do, we finna let her loose. She's got a burning testimony that she wants to talk about. And Pastor, it's on you. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today, and by the way, welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. If you're here, that must mean it's for you. I'm going to say this too. Eat the meat and throw away the bones because not everything is going to be for you. Some things you just need to throw out, okay? So if the meat is there, take the meat. Don't worry about the bones because that part's not for you. That's for somebody else, okay? Somebody else that's listening. (laughs) It might be the same person sitting next to you, but throw away the bones and eat the meat. And if you're in this situation, I hope I'm able to guide you. I'm hoping I'm able to push you push you to who you are supposed to be. But I want to talk today about how my divorce saved my life. Yes, Lord I Jesus. said it. Mm. How my divorce saved my life. Because at that point when I was married, my husband was my God. See, when I had issues, financial issues, mental issues, mm. any kind of issues I had, all I had to do was call out my husband's name. You know how God says, call my name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, my husband's name was who I called. <laughs> my husband's name was who I called because to him, he was my God. And I did not realize that. I did not know God. So God had to move him out the way. Yep. Not only did he move him out the way, he moved my best friend out the way. Jesus. First, he took the best friend. Well, when he took my best friend, I felt like I lost something for real. I don't know why, but I felt you should never feel like you lost something for real Mm -hmm. when you lose your best friend because that should be a relationship you should be able to get back at some point. Well, things ain't been the same with us, but that's okay as long as she know God too, as long as she know God too. But the next person that left my life was my husband, and I'm going to tell you exactly how he said it. He said, Daisy, I'm leaving you. He walked out the door, and I hadn't seen him. For about three, four weeks. Mm. And that's what, so in, the, in between that time, of course, I cried. I stayed out of work, laid in bed the whole time, didn't want to pay no bills, didn't want to do mm. nothing, didn't want to bathe, didn't want to talk to nobody. It led to a spiral thing with me. It was one thing my light bulb would go out and I'd start crying and blaming it on him because he left. I had to go see my doctor uh, one day, and my doctor um, asked me what was going on. She put something through it, and I did. Took me okay. My two pills I would take, and then after I take those two pills, and if five seconds later I ain't feel no difference or I didn't feel sleepy, I take two more. (laughs) Well, them two didn't work, so I said, let me take three this time. (laughs) Them three didn't work. I said, well, let me take four because in my mind, in my mind, it was the devil telling me to take those. But see, I wasn't paying any attention to the devil. Only person I was listening to is me, Mm. right? But the devil was trying to fool me each time because each time I took the extra pills, in my mind, I was only taking two. Mm. In my mind, I was only taking three. See, I wasn't Mm. adding two plus two plus three. Mm. I was just saying three. I was just saying two. I eventually took an entire bottle of 16 pills. Ooh, Jesus. (laughs) 
Let me tell you how God worked in your life at the same time. He know what he was doing. So after I had taken the 16 pills, how about y'all? I still ain't fall asleep. I, I, where they do that at? Mm. I don't know what kind of pills them was, but they weren't working. Must have been sugar pills. But anyway, I took all 16 of them. So the next day I had to go see my doctor psychiatrist. I said, um, yeah, I took the pills. I need something stronger because they ain't working. And she said, well, how many did you take? I said, I took the whole bottle. Mm. My poor doctor, she ain't say nothing to me. She just looked at me. She politely got up, walked out the room, and yeah. locked the door. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm thinking in my head, why she locked the door? Maybe she did it by mistake. I'm going to just sit here and wait for her. She come back in the room tell me, Daisy, we're going to send you over to the hospital for a little bit because uh, you pretty much tried to commit suicide. And to me, in my mind, I was like, no, I didn't. What are you talking about? I didn't try to commit suicide. What's wrong with you? No, Daisy, you actually did try to commit suicide. You took 16 pills, one at a time, just to put you to sleep, not realizing it was Satan in your ear the whole time saying, take another, take another, take another. The devil all in your mind. another. And I took them until it was 16 gone, 16 gone. But let me tell you how God kept me that whole time. The worst time I had of all of that was laying up inside that room with no TV, nothing to look at just in that room. And Lord, every time I got up and closed the door, the doctors came by and opened it back up and said, we ain't going to let you out of here until you start coming out and communicating with everybody, till you start sitting with everybody. So I started doing that only to get out of that building because they weren't going to let me out. But let me tell you something else about all of this. Through my divorce... Not only did my divorce save my life, my divorce allowed me to grow up and be the person I am today because there is no way in the world I would be who I am, what I am, and doing what I am doing today had I not gotten that divorce. That divorce stood in the way. And I know this ain't for everybody. I know this is not for everybody. So I'm not encouraging anyone to get a divorce. You better look at God and see what God has planned for you. So I, again, I am not encouraging anyone to get a divorce. But there are, some, there are people out there in my situation. And this was my situation. My situation had gotten so bad, everything that was coming down, everything, I mean, car after car was getting broken down, finances was gone. The, one, of the, one of the other things that did happen to me is I went through a foreclosure. Yeah. Knocked on my door as loud as he said, as loud as he said, Daisy, I'm leaving. Knocked on my door and told me I had 20 minutes to pack up everything in a four-bedroom house, upstairs, downstairs, two-door garage. And I hadn't packed a thing because in my mind, I wasn't going nowhere. Mm. I had 20 minutes. That's what the police officer said. I had 20 minutes to vacate. If I didn't, they were going to arrest me. So now, and I wasn't there by myself, so I had my two daughters there. So I had to go tell them, hey, you got to, you know, get what you can now. We got to get out of here because... They're putting locks on the doors. Had to call my son, who was at work, to tell him, hey, come home and get what you can, because they're putting locks on the doors. Didn't know what I was going to do at that point. Wasn't even thinking about what I was going to do. All I knew is that my life was over with. That's all I knew is that my life was over with. At this point, I grabbed my gun. But got a gun that looked like it's from the 1919s, y'all. It's so long. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't a rifle, but it might as well be because it's long. <laughs> I grabbed my little gun, went right to my little area that I go and walk in, and I sat there trying to get enough, 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 occur, enough of nerves to shoot myself in the head. Mm. Trying to get up enough of nerves to do it. Trying to. And just when I finally made up my mind, I said, okay, I think you can do it now, Daisy, because to me, all I need to do is sleep and stop thinking. Mm. Stop thinking. Just as I was getting ready to do it, my daughter comes and opens the door and said, Ma, I knew you was here. She said, Ma, give me the gun. Everything going to be all right. And slowly things got better, but it was hard. It was a road I had to travel for God. There's a point in your life, God says, now I've chosen you to stand up and be who I want you to be. We can't keep running. We can't keep doing the same things we've been doing. We just can't. He doesn't allow us to. He said, I've chosen you. And when he chose us, 
That means he has a plan for us. The Bible says, Jeremiah says, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. He says, I know them. And if he know them, they must be good. They must be good. So in all of my testimony and all that, and you know, I'm not trying to be long because I don't want to, you know, be too long to where, to where people just stop finding interest in what, what's going on, but mm -hmm. I want them to understand. No, talk about it. And, talk about and it. all this time, I, I want to say this. Sometimes God will put us in places, allow us to go into places, allow us to go. And our perfect example is growing in the midst of thorns and vessels. Mm -hmm. Ah, growing in the midst of thorns and vessels. You know, that was Adam's, one of Adam's curses to, to work a ground that's, that's filled with thorns and vessels. But even in the midst of God saying, work this ground, he also said, I want you to multiply. He said, I also want you to multiply. So even in the midst of my divorce, even in everything I was going through, even in through my divorce, even through light bulbs going out, even through cars going down, even through foreclosure, even through all of that, all of that, losing my job, even through all that, he said, Daisy, now grow. Uh, Pastor, uh, I want to ask you, how long were you married? I was married for 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. And out of those 10 years, how did you treat your husband? Oh, my God. Y'all, if I told you, y'all said, no wonder he left you. I'd have left you, too. <laughs> <laughs> but how, but how, how did you treat him? I, well, I put it to you this way. I was a very spoiled mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever I asked for, I got it. If I didn't get it, then I'm going to be mad and I'm not going to talk to you. And you mm -hmm. did not want that mm. because ain't no telling how long that would last. So I was very spoiled. Um, I, like I said, I did not know God. I, was, I thought that was normal. Mm -hmm. I thought that was normal for me to have my way. Right. I thought it was just normal. That was my mindset. Didn't know otherwise until God pulled me out. I thought it was normal. I did not treat him good. Mm -hmm. I did not. But not you, at all. The reason why I was asking, because I know when you said that, when he told you that he was leaving, mm -hmm. and then in your mind you felt it was over yes. when he decided. That. Yes. But you have to realize, and people that's listening, you can't put nobody before God. Yep. Yep. And he had to let you know that. Yes, he That he did. was still God. Yes, he and did. And you can't cherish. And because guess what I'm doing? I'm going to take it from you. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And that, and I have to take it from you so you can see who I am. Yes, yes. You see what yes, I'm saying? Yes. And I, I was just thinking about it. I, wrote, I was writing it down when you was talking. And, you know, a lot of us always put things before God. We... We cherish things. Mm -hmm. and I tell people, start cherishing your children. Yes, yes, Because God yes. can take that child from yes. me just to let you know who I am. Yes, and you know to let I'm, you know he belongs to me. And he he does that's not right. belong to you. It's not ours. He just letting us borrow these children. <laughs> it's when not ours. When you say I do, that means we have given ourselves Except to, to him. him. That's not to your husband. Yes, Not yes, to your yes, children, but yes. to him. To him. And so, I, you know, I didn't want to interrupt you, but, no, you know, that, that thought that came to me, because I hear a lot of that where people were saying, I I treated my husband like this, and I did this, and I put him on a pedestal, and mm -hmm. I did all of this, and, and he left me. Well, I wonder why. Because mm -hmm. guess who you forgot all about? Exactly. Yeah. And it's so funny, in this situation, I didn't put him on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I made him put me on a pedestal. Mm. So, see, that goes both ways. It both it ways. That's both it. Ways. Both ways. I did not put him on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. He put me on a pedestal. So God had to show me. Who he was. Who he was. That's he had to it. to show me who he was. That's right. That's and it, right. even after all of that, even after he left, even after he left for years, and I'm talking about years, mm -hmm. I still had my husband first. I still had him first. God mm -hmm. had to slowly work. I had to grow. He had to slowly work through me to let me know exactly who, who he, he was. Is. He had to let me know because had he not let me know, I would still be here today. Oh, well, I wonder if he's going to call me. Let me see what he's doing. Mm. Let me see what's going on. And that is no way to live. There and see, the devil was trying to take you out before God. Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, he will. And the thing of it, he was so sly when he did that to me mm. because nowhere in my mind I thought the fact that the devil was trying to take me out. 
take me out. I'm going to mix another little testimony in here with you because mm-hmm. even after um, I got my life uh, into Christ and Christ, you know, start doing things in my life, not uh, physical things, not material things. He just started straightening my mind out, mm-hmm. my mind where I had so much peace in him. And in the midst of doing all that, he still had growing in me that he needed to do. So I'm going to tell y'all another little testimony in the midst of all this Go ahead. as well. Um, on May the 5th of 2020, I came home from work and picked my grandchild some grilled cheese sandwich. My daughter was in the bed. And I said, well, you know, my leg hurt me a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take my pills. And I asked my daughter, hey, you got anything I can take for my leg? She said, yeah, here. You know, I just sold it in the pack with the rest of them, you know, <laughs> all for one, and dumped it down. <laughs> all for one. Dumped it down, went and sat in the bed. I'm going to look at a little bit of TV, see everything all right. I'm going to lay down. My grandchild was in my room with me mm-hmm. the whole time. So evidently, she was trying to wake me up, couldn't wake me up. She goes back in the room, and she tells my daughter um, that, hey, you know, my daughter asked for a piece of grilled cheese. She said, go ask Granny to make me a piece. So, um... My grandchild says, uh, Granny won't wake up. But this time when she says, Granny, don't wake up, she knows I play with her a lot. Like I play like I'm asleep. And mm-hmm. she knows I'm playing, so she'll jump on the bed. And she did all of this before she went back in the room. But my daughter says the look on her face was different. It wasn't mm. like there's something. She said, I know Granny had just got home, so there's no way she was that she was asleep like that. Mm. So she gets up to come in and, and, and see what I'm doing. I'm laying in bed. Well, not laying. I'm sitting up in bed with my head turned to the side. She calls my name. I don't respond. She Mm. walks over to me, put her hand on my foot. My foot is cold. Mm. I'm dead. I'm laying in there 25 minutes, dead in the bed. Dead. Wow. Dead. Dead. God God was doing something at that time. Let me let let me tell you. He was doing something at that time. Yeah, I gotta tell you, so she got a whole sheet over here with notes. She done folded that up. Okay, I can't love trying to talk. <laughs> As I said, so, you don't need them notes, honey, because you don't talk right with seeing you. So um, after she uh, realized, she started calling my name, calling my name. And, you know, God was trying to do something in her at the same time as well. So, you know, when God ever is doing something, don't think he's just got his. You know how we go to church and you say that person should have been here because that was for them. No, that was for you. For too. you. That's it right. May, yeah. It may have been for them, but it's for you. too. Exactly. So what God was doing that day, he was doing something in me as well as in my daughter, because the confidence that she needed, she didn't think she had. So God had to show her who she is and who he said she was so she immediately laid hands and started praying for me meanwhile she didn't got my phone calling family she calling my uh, daughters and everybody meanwhile she's also on the phone with ems trying to give them the address so she got two phones and she's uh, you giving me um CPR mm. and she's giving me CPR all of this in the midst of all this and I'm just laying there so now she didn't decide let me start praying she started laying her hands start praying and I start snoring as soon as she laid her hand and start praying, I started snowing. So then she's still, you know, doing the compressions and the ambulance get there. And once they finally get there, they tell her to go ahead and move off. You know, they got it from there. And so they working on me for a little bit. Then they start telling everybody to go around the corner because they're not getting a response. Basically meaning they was about to bring out the white sheet. Okay. Mm. So she said, and they're telling my her to go around the corner because they're not getting a response. She says, I know but I got to talk to somebody else right now. She started praying again. Y'all know what I started doing, right? Started breathing. I started snoring. Mm. <laughs> Soon as she started praying, I started snoring. Same thing. Same thing. And out of all of that, it wasn't the fact that, uh, okay, I missed it that time. I know God didn't know what he was doing because God always knows what he's yes. doing. See, when God put Adam to sleep <laughs> to remove that rib, he was mm. making a new Adam as Make, well. And that's what he did with you. Ah, you're Amen. Yes, sir. So when sometimes when God is interfering in your life for whatever reason it may be, whatever reason, and it's always something that God is doing. You have to look at every part of your life, everything going on in your life, every little thing. Yes. And this is very important, very important. Every little thing that's going on inside your life, you have to look at it as God 
has his hand in there somewhere. Yes, yes. Somewhere. Yes. It ain't always the devil. It ain't always the devil. Because remember, God sent the devil to Job. He sent him to him. So it ain't always the devil saying, I'm going to mess with her today. You better let the devil do what he got to do so God can go ahead and grow you up. Let him go ahead and do what he got to do so God can let, go ahead and let him grow you up. Okay, hey, man, man, how you doing? I know I haven't said anything for a second. Uh, to those that I don't know, this is my auntie. Um, auntie, I have one question for you. I have yes. a couple questions. First thing, um, out of all your nephews, who you think probably is the most handsome and best dressed? Uh, no, he Thank did. you for that. No. Uh, uh, so as she said, she said me. Uh, well, thank God for that there. <laughs> That's my auntie. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm so sick of this one. I'm just... Y'all, erase that part. <laughs> Y'all listen to that part. Because <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> Y'all, he bad. He bad. <laughs> uh, also, um, I want to ask a question here. Um, hearing everything that you went through uh, with yes. a divorce and, and also dying, and I know that's something that a lot of people haven't experienced. And I, and I say that's a very lot have experienced, that dying and coming back and everything. What words would you have, or would you say, for a young lady now that's married? That yes. you can probably give them as, some, as a golden nugget that might help them in their marriage. Don't you move. Don't you go nowhere unless you've spoken with God. And you know without a doubt, Hallelujah. without a doubt, God is standing, standing, telling you to stand still, stand strong. Because God has so much for you. What you see now is just like you. <laughs> it's just like you. What you see now in you is not what you're going to see in you next year. So whatever God is doing in your husband and whatever relationship, it can be your children, whatever God is doing in them, let them grow. Well, a lot of times we see God doing stuff in us and we always saying God is testing me. God is testing me. He's testing me. God is not always there testing you. He's not always there to miss testing you. God is not trying to test you through everything. He's trying to make you something through everything. Everything that you go through, there is a purpose. There is a purpose. There is a process to growth. There is a process to growth. My process was a divorce. My process was death. My process was losing vehicles. My process was a foreclosure. Everybody has a process to their growth. Like the book of Job. Exactly. There is a process to everything. But all he wants you to do is put him first in every process. Put him first because his hand is in it. His hand is somewhere in it. You think he's going to leave you alone for five minutes? He's not. He says, everywhere you go, I am. There I am. There I am. There's no place you can go without him. It's the point of trusting him. I know when uh, about a year ago, um, I had to have which, them to put this light down mm -hmm. to your stomach to see what's going on because I was having a lot of stomach problems then. Um, and I had told, you know, the anesthesia order that I, I have sleep apnea, real bad, yeah. severe sleep apnea. And he said, well, you know, there's another way. Cause he said he was really scared to put me to sleep. Yeah. He said, there's another way we can do it, but you'll be awake, but you'll be seeing everything. And I'm like, I don't want to see y'all put no tube down my <laughs> stomach. I'd be, no, I'd be panicking. You, I yeah. probably wouldn't be still. So he said, well, dude, you had a choice to do that or we'd put you to sleep. Okay. So I said, well, just going to put me to sleep, but it ain't going to take that long for the process. You know, so I said, just going to put me to sleep. You need to sleep anyway. That part. So <laughs> I got back in the room and I was wondering why I said, oh, I wouldn't go long. He came to my husband. My husband was sitting in the room, you know, where they bring you back when you're doing the outpatient yeah. stuff. And my husband was sitting there and the doctor told them that they had to stop the procedure because I stopped breathing on the operating mm. table. Mm -mm -mm. Stop breathing mm. on the operating table. Pretty much. I was gone. Mm. So they said they had to work with me to wow. bring me back. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, I have experienced it. Yes, yes. And I, God gave me another chance because mm -hmm. he wasn't through with me. That's right. Because he still have a plan That's right. for me. And wherever that plan is, I still don't know what it is, but I do know that he wasn't through with me. Because right. I could have been on the operator table dead and ain't know nothing. Exactly. Sleep 
Exactly. All you know is you went in and didn't I come went out. in and didn't come out. That's, That's all it. You so know. I knew then that God had a plan, and I told God, I said, I'm going to live my life the way you want me to live exactly. it. Exactly. You know, That's it. Yeah. You know, uh, every time. Every time that I've had surgery. Pick you up. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just trying to let you know we can't pick you up. But mm. I would just, you know, I do understand that um, being at that point yes. of dying. Yes. You know, didn't know anything. But I do thank God that he saw another way. Yeah. He saw it another way to keep me here. Yeah. And. and you know, the, the Bible, he will speaks that God has an appointed time for us all. For us all, exactly. He has an appointed time for us all. And no matter what that time is, because I trust his plans, I trust what he's going to do in me or for me. I have to rely on him. Now, sometimes my faith falls short, but I'm not human if my faith don't fall short. That's true. That's I'm not human. If my faith is so full, if I'm so full of faith where my I can count on my faith every single time, that why am I having all this trouble? Why am I still crying? Why am I still having road rage? Why am I still going through all this crazy stuff? So there's sometimes, and it can be the strongest person, your faith is going to, you're not going to have the faith that you want all the time. That's the purpose of God growing in us. That's the purpose of him growing. I said those thorns and thistles, that's the purpose of him growing inside us. You have to, he says, all I ask for a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. But even, even a mustard seed, even the mustard seed, sometimes we struggle with that mustard that's seed. That's it, that little sometimes bit of faith. Sometimes we struggle. What, what did uh, Lot's wife do? He mm -hmm. said, don't look back. That's it. Don't look back. And she did. <laughs> that little bit of mustard seed. That little bit of faith Ooh, from there. Yeah, that's and that's it. all we need is that little bit oh, of faith. Man, that, was, that was actually good. I was actually, I'm only saying this because I was actually reading about that this morning. Amen. It said she was running behind a lot when she, mm -hmm. looked, behind, when she looked back. Mm -hmm. Look back. And I said to myself, what you doing behind them instead of on the side of them? Amen. <laughs> I, my <laughs> thing is, why are you still looking back? Right. That's, why are you still, now at, don't get me wrong, because looking back is okay sometimes, because had I not looked back, I wouldn't see that scratch. Mm -hmm. Had I not looked back, I wouldn't remember that burn. Had I not looked back, I wouldn't feel that that thorn in my side. So there's nothing wrong with looking back, but as long as you turn your head right back to the forward. In, you know, I used to, um, and this is a whole other, but you know what? And it, cause it could have reminded me of some things. When um, I used to be in a relationship with somebody and a nice woman would walk by, I'd wait till I was behind her so I could look back out. <laughs> 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 you see how the enemy works? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Y'all, please excuse what? my co-host. Ah, <laughs> uh, Claire. How we do? I do, Claire, Lord. Now y'all women know, know, right? If, but, uh, you, if you walk with somebody and all of a sudden they start slowing down, get behind you. Uh-uh. You need uh, to be come right on, on the you side know what you do to your kids? Come on, walk in front of me. I have that's something else I want to ask Well, honey, I, I, I'm through looking back. That rear view mirror. I don't look at that no more because I'm looking forward what God has Amen. for me. Amen. I got another question. Um, yes. Yeah, it I, can't be about your looks. No, 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 okay. no, no. We already know I look good. So, uh, <laughs> I have a question about um suicide. Your thoughts on suicide. You told us how you um you was contemplating suicide, sat down, and uh, thank God that it did not happen. Yes. You did not go yes. through with it. What would you tell somebody if they were listening to this right now was contemplating suicide? What would you have? Mm, what words would you have for them? Good question. Now, let me say this. There was two times that suicide entered. Mm -hmm. One, the first time, I didn't even recognize it. Mm. That's with the pills. I did not recognize mm. that I was trying to commit suicide. That's how far gone I was. Mm. And then the second time, I, in a sense, I still didn't recognize it because my first thought is I want to sleep. And that's all I thought of it as sleep. See, I didn't think about the fact that no days you're not going to wake up after this nap. Mm. You're going to still sleep. So it, it's two things that I tell you. If you're ever contemplating suicide, ever, 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 I strongly, strongly recommend that you speak 
with someone, reach out to yeah. someone. Yes. And I know a lot of times you say, I don't have nobody, because sometimes the wrong person is just yeah. the wrong person. That's true. Sometimes it's just a stranger on the street. God will send you who he needs you to speak to. Yes, if right. it's just a stranger on the street, somebody you see walking by, hey, yeah. I'm not feeling good right now. I, I, I just need somebody to talk to. Mm. I need somebody to talk to. And it's always a mind thing. It's a mind thing. I'm telling you, that mind is a terrible thing to waste. Terrible thing. It is a terrible thing to waste because everything that I went through, everything that I went through, it was my mind playing with me the whole time. Everything boiled down to my mind, how I thought, how I felt. And that's what the devil plays with, that with mind. With your mind. That mind. But you know, the devil can't touch something he doesn't know about. That's right. He can't touch something he doesn't know about. So I'm telling you now, young ladies, young men, anyone out there that is actually thinking about or contemplating suicide or, or, or going through an issue that I, I'm, I went through or is in the process of going through something like that. What amazes me, and I was just telling my daughter the other day, it amazes me with women how um, we can uh, get separated from a man that we've been with majority of our life and we just feel like our life is over with mm, it's just beginning to tell you the truth yeah. <laughs> just beginning yeah we feel like our life is over with because i went through all those measures over a man mm. all those measures over the a man mm. a think man. of how little that is i'm not putting the man down because god placed him here for us you know, and I'm not putting a man down at all, but you got to understand who you are. You got, you have to, if you don't know how to walk boldly and who you are, Jesus. you are nobody else. Don't follow nobody else. Don't try to be like nobody else. Don't do what nobody else do because you won't hold on to it. You can fake it. It's not a fake it till you make it because you'll never make it if you're faking it. And it's you, not only with, with a man, it's a woman too. Yes, exactly. Men, men lose their mind over a woman. They yes. they want to kill them. I was looking at a I was looking at a um a movie. I think it was on Lifetime. Yeah, I'm a Lifetime look movie freak. So <laughs> I was looking at a movie on Lifetime and no, it wasn't that. It was twenty twenty. I was looking at twenty twenty. Mm, so it was true. Twenty twenty, yeah, it was true. And uh, this this lady started she was married. She had two kids, and they was married for 15 years. Well, she started liking a woman. She started having, she found this lady, she became best friends, and all of a sudden they started engaging in relationship. Yeah. And so she, uh, the husband was finding out what was going on. He figured it out. And so the uh, wife left him uh, with the two girls. Mm. And it, it took his mind, because he couldn't believe he lost his job. He lost his family. Mm. He lost his home. He lost his children. Mm. So in his mind, he figured he done lost everything. So what I got to lose? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So he comes back. Uh, she moved and left and started staying with her grandmother. Her grandmother. The husband uh, came with a loaded gun, parked his mm. car down the street, like five miles down the street, walked up to the house. Shot the grandmama. Mm. She was there at the door. Went upstairs. Shot the wife. Mm. Came back downstairs and shot both of his daughters. Mm. My. So they was already saying that they had it on the radio about a car. They'd been seeing a car parked in the woods. They didn't know who the car was. So the police was coming out trying to figure out what's going on. But on the radio, he heard that there was a dispatch that somebody was shooting. So all of that came in together. When he got up there, he heard the daughter still talking, help, help, help. Mm. So he ran upstairs, and she died. She was able to tell who did it before she died. Mm. He went back downstairs. He saw the other daughter. She was already pronounced dead. Dead, yeah. He went to the grandmama. She, she was still alive. Mm -hmm. She wasn't dead, but when she got to the hospital, she died at the hospital. Mm. So it's not only that women lose it over a man. Men lose it over a yeah. woman. And, and they don't want to lose nothing. Yeah. And, and men don't want, not all men, but you got some men don't want you to have nobody else. Yeah, that's right. And Even the, if you divorce, they don't want you to have nobody although else. Although they can have somebody else. But although they can have somebody mm -hmm. else. And, so and, it works both ways. You know, yeah. it's not all about a man. It's, it's a woman, too. Yeah. It works both ways. Both and ways. I've seen young relationship teenagers. Mm. 
teenagers in type of relationships yes. like that don't want you with another man that want to beat you up and abuse you. You understand? So it's, 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 it's something. A, as a man, I, I want to say this because I sit back and I, I look at a, a bunch of stuff. Here we go. Um, one thing I can't <laughs> seem to get the understanding of is that you don't want this person with nobody else, but you don't want to treat this person good. Mm. Man. And so I, it, it's kind of a, a crazy mindset. Now, I ownership. want you, but I don't want to take care of you. And not when I say take care of you, I don't mean buy anything, this and that, that. I don't want to love you. I don't want to nurture. I don't want to just like go buying an empty lot. Yeah. I, I like the lot because the way it looked. But I never went and built on it. I just bought it just because I wanted to possess it. It's called ownership. And after yeah, and after years run by because I never did anything to it, never cut the ground up, yep. it just grew. Now it looks terrible. Mm-hmm. But I don't want this lot to go nowhere. But I don't want to take I care of it. And and I, and that's how people are. Not just men. Men are like that with women. Mm-hmm. Women are like, like that, that with men. men. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you 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 want a good relationship. You yes. want a good marriage. But you're not willing doing the things to make it good. You don't want to cherish this person. You don't want to love this person That's like right. Christ loved the church. Mm. That's right. So you refuse to do all that there, but somehow you expect everything to be good. Your way. Well, you know, I worked at a job um, uh, before, and they had this, uh, they had this special uh, acronym. It was called WIFM. WIFM was what's in it for me. Oh, there you go. Mm. What's, in it for me? what's in it for me? Because yeah. it's always going to be about me. I know that. Yeah, I know I'm treating you wrong as long as you treat me Selfish. right. Selfish. Come on here. Selfish. 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 I know that. I know that lot is vacant and I can use it for something else, but it's mine and it's mine. I ain't That's no telling what I'm gonna do with it. I just need to sit there and, and have people come and ask and keep asking me for it, uh-huh. so I can keep telling them no. Uh-huh. You know, it's like all that about that self. <laughs> this is why the Bible talks about being a servant. This is why he talks about being a servant. I can't be no servant if I'm holding on and hoarding to everything, not willing to give up. But now, keep in mind, you have to be wise because we got some professionals out there now yes. that know what they're doing. They work that Lord just as hard, just like it's a that job. Is. Just like it's a job. And you know, God said he always talk about our temper, keeping it clean. Be careful what soul you enter into your body. Yes. Yes. It's you, that soul. You, and I'm, I don't even know how, how to explain it. I want to say like women's. Right. You let the men just use your body. Uh-oh. And all that soul, all, the all spirit, them different yeah. spirits get all into your ties, body. Soul ties. Every time they and come then you don't know that how all. to untie. Yes. Because it's already tied up. So same thing. The, one, the same ones that come and ask for help and go right back out, do the same so, thing, and then come right back and ask for help. So now what do we do? What do we do? Keep helping them. Keep helping them until helping God them. says, that's it. That's now it. let me do it. Well, that's it. Now thing. let me do it. But sometimes we got to let it go to let yeah. him do it. We can't yeah. do it ourselves all well, the time. One of the things I've noticed with people with soul ties is because you've taken a piece from this relationship, mm-hmm. a piece from that relationship, a piece from that relationship. And you want to pile all that on one yeah. person. Oh, that's See, what it that is. that person did that, yeah. I liked it that. Yeah. That person did that, and I liked it that. Now, you want the person you come to have all that that you yeah. don't got from each that one puzzle. of these persons. That puzzle and see, that you don't put together. And see, I can't be 100% of that there, yeah. that, 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 that puzzle that you don't put together mm. and yes. stuff. But you don't want to You the one went and tried all that's those. a leaking piece <laughs> somewhere. You don't want to ate from all them tables. Okay. okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and don't try to put that on me because you don't went to every table and ate from that. Exactly. Okay. I can just be the best me that I can be. That exactly. God wants me to be to you and everything. Now, and sometimes the person is never satisfied. You're right. Never, never satisfied. Never ever satisfied. But you ain't going to get it all in one person. Come on. I'm just mm-hmm. sorry. You ain't going to get, you can't get it all in one person. Mm-hmm. I don't expect my husband to be the best. He does the best way, best thing he can, and do it the best way he can. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. And you learn. But, you learn and from you, each that's one. it. If he that's can it. put up with your faults, Lord you Jesus, because I'm Come telling on. you, Lord I, Jesus, I am he a probably hot in there mess. praying now. I, I'm, a, I'm a hot mess. I get, even if somebody uh, thought about marrying me, I'm telling you now, uh-huh. you're heading down the wrong track. This ain't what you want. This ain't uh-huh. what you want. Because I'll turn back into that selfish daisy in a second. And for, I know I ain't supposed to do it, but you know. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. 
I might be a little different this time. God's still working on me. You know how we say God's still working? He ain't finished working on me yet. Uh, yeah, look, 60 years, he's still working. Something wrong. But you know what I always <laughs> believe? A person going to show you who they are sooner or later. Yes. That's right. Oh, I Because when yeah. you're dating a person, oh, that is an audition. Yes, it it's is. It's just there an audition. Go. It's the audition. But once you marry that audition, they're going to show you who they really is. Let that girdle comes off. It's going to show. Girdle girdle off. It's going to come off. And all comes of this comes off. And everything that's been under that girdle uh-huh. is coming out. Me and y'all too. You it. about to let that, bu- you know that buckle, the extra buckle you pull up yeah, when you go on that first date. You're going to let it down. Okay. Gonna, uh, yeah, by the time that third date and all, buddy, I'm taking you back. I'm taking you back down to the fourth belt. I told, we was just talking, my mother was just talking and um, when when you get married and you move in with somebody and you can really see how they you're gonna find things that you're not going yeah, on. That's right. it. That's you know? right. So it's no it's no sense in one person thinking, hey, I'm everything that he wanted. Yeah. No, no, there's gonna be some things about you that no. he or she yes. does not like. And that's even it. If, even and you have if, to compromise. Even if both of y'all are perfect in everything. Y'all like the same movies. Y'all like this. Y'all like that. Sometimes y'all know it's just you. It's, it's just, just you. I don't want to talk to you right now. I don't want to smoke. I can't stand the way you eat. Look at the way you walk. I can't stand. It is just us. It's us. I'm telling you. You know when it gets so bad to where I'm looking at a person eat and I'm like, I can't even stand the way you eat no more. Yes, yeah, some, there's something wrong with me. There ain't nothing wrong yeah, with you. Yeah, I don't you. got cell in my like ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, oh, you know, the older yeah. you get, you yeah, just breathing. 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 Yeah. Why are you breathing so loud? Why you got to just be breathing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sit down and sit down somewhere. Uh, why, why are you walking so much? Go somewhere and hold your breath. <laughs> Damon trying to kill you over here. Talk about hold your breath. Damon, get off. I'm telling you, but it's all about it's all about staying close. It's all about being in that relationship with Christ and knowing He's going to guide you. There's gonna be a lot of things we ain't gonna like doing. And one thing is holding our breath. There's gonna be a lot of things we ain't gonna like doing. But you know, God says that I got you the whole way. Hey <laughs> man, man, we be over here. We be whole doing. <laughs> I'm so sick of this man. <laughs> we cut up over here. Y'all know we cut up over here. You're trying to kill him, man. You're trying to kill him. Him. But all in all, um, Pastor uh, Daisy um, Blair, I really, really enjoyed you. Amen. I amen. really enjoyed your Mercy. testimony. I encourage somebody. To yeah, and I'm sure you have. You know, I ask the people that's listening, don't just click it on and say you heard something. Listen to the whole podcast. There's something that you may have missed. Yes. That you think you need to hear it again. Don't hear half of it. Listen to the whole podcast. It's some great information. Like I say, we we don't sit here and we don't we ain't got time to test a lie. That's yes, right. Amen. We don't have time. This is not amen. what this podcast that is about. Hurt. That was hurt I went through. Yeah. Now, hurting people. Hurt. Hurting right. people. Do cry. Yes. Yes. They might not, you might not see it on the outside, but trust me, they hurting on the inside. inside. And they do cry. And I really thank God for, with this podcast, giving me the vision and the name for this podcast because that's what it's all about. Hurting people. It's not hurting women. It's not hurting men. It's not hurting women. It ain't hurting children. It's hurting people. Everybody hurts one way or another. Yes. Pastor Blair, I really do appreciate you. Amen, amen. I appreciate you, you coming. I appreciate it. God, I appreciate you took the time out amen. to come and see about me. Amen. <laughs> amen. And Damien, thank you. Thank you. Man, <laughs> again, my nephew, y'all. Again, I am her best looking and best dressed oh, nephew. Y'all, I love him. I can't help it. I, I know love that's him. right. Go ahead, <laughs> But the mind is a terrible <laughs> thing to waste. waste. I, don't know. I just <laughs> I ain't wasting it. <laughs> So, people who is listening, I want to thank y'all for listening again. I appreciate you. Like I always say, if you want to talk about something, leave me a comment. Let me know how you like the podcast. You can always email me at wpproduction at gmail.com. I'm sorry, wpproduction2022 at gmail.com. You can email me if you want to talk about something. Email me. We don't mind talking about it. 
If you want to be a part of this podcast, if you have something that you want to talk about, let me know. Just let me know, and we can we can invite you and put you on the schedule and let you come on in and talk about it. Um, when you listen to it, please subscribe. Because every time you subscribe, whenever this podcast is published, it will come to you. So you don't have to look for it. It'll automatically come to you. It's Hurting People Do Cry podcast. Damien, anything else you want to say before? I man, I always want to let the people know, man, God has not forgotten about them. And I love them. Amen. And that's about it. Pastor, Amen. anything you want to say before we... I just want you guys to hold on. Hold well, on. To his unchanging. It will not always be like this. Amen. Mm, hold on. Mm. Amen. I thank you. Talk to God. He want to hear from you today. I love you. And guess what? God do too. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.